Hola amigos de AXN, hoy tenemos una invitada de lujo, ni más ni menos que Stana Katik, actriz protagonista y productora ejecutiva de la vibrante serie Absentia, cuya segunda temporada estrenamos en exclusiva aquí en AXN. Hi Stana, welcome to Madrid. Hi, very nice to see you. Likewise, thank you very much. Yes. So our audience in Spain, um, we're so excited to ask you some questions. Uh, we've chosen a few of them and are you ready? Yes. So first question is from Dayalzim from Instagram and it says, could you imagine how important your fi feminine roles in acting would become to so many women? So did I ever imagine that the roles that I took on would have as large of an impact on women? Um, I don't know if I, I looked at it in that way. I think I always try to find characters that are believable, that are three-dimensional, that are complex, um, and that would be an interesting challenge to play. Uh, and if audiences glean anything from that, then that's an amazing sort of gift for me. I know that for some of the characters that I've played, uh, women very much relate to them and in some ways admire them or want to uh, emulate elements of them. And then um, men, you know, are, are attracted to those kinds of characters, those kinds of women. And I think if people are responding to these characters, it's a real beautiful gift. Next question is from Oscar010895 uh, from Instagram as well. Do you identify with any specific feature of Emily? I wonder, you know, she's ultimately, yeah, she is, you know, this, this badass. She's almost kind of this creature, right? Um, I suppose I respond to this wonderful relationship that she has with those that are really close to her. There's a tremendous amount of loyalty um, in her uh, towards people like her son Flynn or like her father Warren and brother and so forth. So. I, I love that because I get so much out of my own personal relationships, friendships and family. Um, so in some way, yeah. In other ways, I, I just think, wow, she's such a survivor, you know? And she's managed to live through things that I don't think I could ever. I would just kind of like, okay, I give up, you know? So yeah. <laughs> okay, so last but not least, we have a question from David. It's, we've seen glimpses of Emily's past and she seemed to be happy and kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And now she's absolutely broken, a completely different person. Mm -hmm. How was she before the abduction? Emily before the abduction was someone who always kind of existed in a fringe area. She was always a bit punk rock. And we see tiny, tiny glimpses of it. I think she found a level of normal by having, you know, a family, um, by getting married to someone like Nick, by having a steady job, by having a child. But this is a character who's always kind of been a bit of a fringe character. I mean, she had a really interesting sort of start in life. She was an orphan as a young child and had to survive that. Um, so I think there's even more edge to this character than we at first know of in the first season and we'll be uncovering more and more of that in the second season. Um, and it's something that is reflected in Flynn, her son as well.